Okay, good. Good. Fix the audio issue. Huh. That's strange. Whatever. <coughs> it's going down. Anarchy's black cat. So we're past the halfway point, so we're in tricolor now. So let's see what's going on. I already knew. Yeah, water's of course winning. One day, one day we'll be on the winning team at halftime. But not today. All right. <coughs> so yeah, we're on Team Grass. Um, oh, hey, look, it's the new... It would be really evil to put Scarlet and Violet spoilers in me chat messages. But I could 100% see people doing that. Oh, yeah, you get it, because... Shiver's gonna win this Splatfest for a third time. Trust me, I can see the future. Oh yeah, we gotta use the shellfish machine tonight. Oh, so I guess they had added a new green ink color to the game? That was like, you know, like a darker, like a grass green. But then there was a bug in the game. And so it's just showing the normal green, like the normal, like neon green. That's, that's kind of funny. You know, they put in all that time. I mean, it's not, it, I say all that time. We, I, we know from modding of the first platoon that you can, it's literally just, a, they have all the colors in the game already. And it's literally just a wheel. And you can, like, rotate the wheel to get which color you want. <laughs> you know. <coughs> Why do I remember that? But yeah, um... Yeah, but yeah, I guess there was a bug that was preventing the new green. So... I fully expect Team Grass to win it, right? If Because Water was ahead at halftime, of course Grass is going to come in and win it. And I think the, ter the stage for... Yeah, hey look, Tricolor right off the bat. The stage for Tricolor is um, this one again. Oh, I like that it's even just the Grass and Fire icons. That's kind of cute. Yeah, so this was the stage in the demo. If you played this Blatfest demo, this was the stage. They did make a few changes, I know. Like, they added a few extra platforms and whatnot. So there are some changes, but, you know, it's nice to start with the tricolor. Yeah, one day I will be on the def one day I'm just gonna have to pick Big Man just so I can be on the defending team. Cause right, that's three for three now. Big man defending team. I mean of course the second I do that it's gonna switch and it's gonna be um It's gonna be Shiver or I don't know, Frey will ever I don't know. Oh god damn it. I I saw the one guy there. I didn't see the other one. We have not been worrying about any of this. Yeah, see they added this little extra side bit right here. Ah. 
Again, I don't care if blue wins. I don't care if red wins. I just want blue to lose. At least I'm assuming that hasn't changed from the last Splatfest. Because this is Splatfest number two, right? Not, not counting the beta. Yeah, because the beta doesn't technically count. So I don't care if we win. I just want them to lose. Because I'm assuming that hasn't changed any. Gosh. Get it. Get it. Nope. And I know it gets easier every, like, the more attempts you make on it, the faster you pick up the signal. Oh, Red did in fact get one. Okay, I didn't, I... I had hoped, but I didn't actually know. Okay, I, I think we got that, because yeah, Red got at least one. I don't know, I know there's a stamp you get for getting the Ultra Sig, for like... Getting the, because yeah, victory. I know there's a stamp you get for getting the Ultra Signal, and I want that stamp. So that's my aim at the moment, to get that stamp. Because we've already got the other one, the Conch Shell, for getting max rank. But I don't, I can't remember what the Ultra Stamp one is. Yeah, I'm fine to keep going. <coughs> oh, I got the... Oh, wow, that's a random badge to get. The, um... The missiles one. Okay, I'll take it. Alright, so we have... Four stories tonight? Yeah, I guess we have four stories. Let's go with that. So, let's start off with our first one. So, I said last week that we were going to get a new Pokemon trailer. Right? It was just kind of inevitable. It just kind of made sense for us to get a new Pokemon trailer. Because, you know, Pokemon. Because, right, the game comes out. Admit it, okay, I might have said that like two weeks ago. I think I said it at like the end of October. Because it would make sense for us to... Right, we were getting one usually the first week of the month. And it would make sense for us to get one right at the end of the month. Wow, they got... <coughs> they got to me first? I knew they were there. <sighs> I guess this Splatfest has been just an utter shit show. From, like, all corners, I've just been hearing about people struggling. And, like, to be fair, I know I don't help, but yeah... Yeah, so I had predicted we were going to get a new Pokemon trailer, right? It was just the logical thing. I was really hoping to get that off sooner. So, right, and but we ended up not getting one last week. We got one this week. So, my prediction for the last Pokemon trailer, I knew they weren't going to show off the final. The starters, like, even the middle evolutions, I knew that wasn't going to happen. My prediction was they were going to show off the Paradox. <laughs> okay, that's funny. They were going to show off the Paradox forms, right? We knew both Grass... Not Grass. Right, we knew about the Paradox forms from the leaks. So my prediction was, oh, they're going to show off the Paradox forms, right? Because that's like... Because they showed off the, um... Convergent evolutions. The Paradox forms would just make sense, right? They're a very logical thing. And you know, they're kind of a big thing. And this new trailer actually does show off the Paradox forms. It's very understated about that fact. Like, they're only in it for a brief second. Like, a few seconds. 
But yes, it does show off the paradox form. They use Dawn Fan. Right? Remember that that um Gosh dang it, they keep getting to me before I can get to them. Remember Dawn Fan, um who I legitimately only remember because Ash had one. I've never used one before. And but it was one of the first Pokemon from Gen 2 shown off. It was originally shown off in the second movie. Before um Right? I don't even know if the new games were announced yet. It was just like, hey, Pokemon the movie 2. Or Pokemon, uh, whatever. Right, Pokemon the movie. Oh, here's some new Pokemon. Hey, look, it's Dawn Fan. It's, um, they showed off a few other things as well. I know Ho-Ho was in the first episode of the anime as well. But yeah, to Togepi, of course. But yeah, I don't know, Dawn Fan's always one. And I know Ash had one, or he had a fan fee. But yeah, Don Fan's one of the ones. You which you know, good. Give I've all I've said the biggest my one of my biggest problems with Gen 8 is that it doesn't give Gen 2 enough love. Cause Gen 7 is this massive love letter to Gen 1, right? Gen 7. Cause Gen 7 came out on the 20th anniversary. And then Gen 8 was also just a massive love love letter to Gen 1 again. Gen 2 needs some love. Gen 3 needs some love. And we don't, I'm not talking remakes here. We don't need remakes. You can show games love without remaking them. You can also show games hate by remaking them. But no, I was like, Gen 2 needs some love. And it looks like this new game's giving Gen 2 some love. I mean, Girafferig's getting an evolution. We have this. This, um, right? Dawn fan in, um,. Uh, is getting right two paradox forms one right i'm one is going to be in scarlet one's going to be in violet and there's at least one other thing i know from the leaks that's also some gen 2 love yeah <coughs> but yeah so the pair i think the paradox forms are a good idea right it's ba it's kind of like um regional variants Right, you know, right, we had regional variants, but right now the only regional variant we know about for this game is, um, what's his, uh, is, um, Whooper, right? He whoops. We don't actually know, because Furgraph is a new evolution, that's, and it doesn't seem like there's a regional giraffe rig. So, right, these paradoxes kind of seem like they're going to be something similar to, like, a regional form. But, right, it's the past and future versions of Pokemon. So, yeah, I, I think it's a good idea, right? I think it's a fun idea. You could have a lot... I think it's an idea you could have a lot of fun with. Whether or not they're going to have a lot of fun with it, we'll see. Um, they all... But, yeah, other than that, the trailer is exactly what we've been seeing for the past few months. Honestly, for the most part, when it comes to details about these new games... The Pokemon Company has kept a lot of secrets. I mean, it doesn't help the game's leaked, but we'll talk about that in a minute. But no, honestly, the Pokemon Company has been keeping a lot of secrets per this game, even more than they did with Gen 8. And oh, to be fair, they kept a fair few secrets with Gen 8. Right? I wasn't the only one to point that out. That, oh, god damn, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to kill it first, and then I would have taken it. Right, like, Gen 7 revealed everything. We knew everything before launch. No, and, like, I mean, they just revealed everything. Not that everything leaked, it's just we knew it, right? They, they showed it off. And then the game leaked, I think. Gen 8, we knew a lot less of. But we knew, I think we knew about 20 Pokemon. We knew a good fair chunk of the gym leaders. We knew a few other things. Okay, if this doesn't get us the Ultra Signal, I don't know what does. So yeah, Gen 8, right, but, so with Gen 8, we knew about 20 Pokemon, we knew a few things, but they, there were still a bunch of secrets. This new game, we know less of, even. I don't even think we know 20 Pokemon. I want to say, well, Do, I mean, does the Dawn Fan count? Because I think without the Dawn Fan, it was like 18, so Dawn Fa these new Dawn Fan forms would be 19 and 20. Oh, and they got the other one. I don't know why I was... Okay, that was a blue. 
Yeah, so I'm, you know, I'm all aboard. Um, right, the game keeps its secrets. The game has leaked, but eh, we'll talk about that next. <clears throat> Why was I talking about that? I don't know, because uh, the trailers are all kind of the same. The one new bit of information we did get from this trailer, or the one thing that came on Twitter, is that we know in this new game, um... We know in this new game, from stuff on Twitter, that Pokemon Home connectivity will be coming next year. So, right, if you want to bring over Pokemon from Legends Arceus, then you will be able to do that next year. That's cool. You know? Okay. It, surpri it surprises me that they take that long to do it. But it's good that it happens. I mean... Again, I hope they future-proof Pokemon Home. Where it's just... It's gonna work from now on forever. Right? I hope that in... Oh, the next... The, when the Switch 2 happens... Oh, we, we're gonna replace Pokemon Home with Pokemon Not Home. Or with Pokemon Universe or something like that. No. Just keep Pokemon Home. Pokemon Home works fine. I have no idea who won that. Oh, they won it by 0.5. Nice. I mean, again, as long as Blue Team loses. Yeah, so Pokemon Home connectivity is coming next year. So that way, only 17 Pokemon will be trapped in Pokemon Home. <laughs> God, I hope the DLC fixes that. I would be so fucking disappointed if the... Because they're going to make DLC for the game. They haven't announced anything, but we <laughs> know that's going to happen, right? If they did it for Gen 8, they're going to do it for Gen 9. Especially because the DLC was actually really good. But, um... Yeah, I if they don't rectify that with Gen... With the DLC, to get every... Po between Sword and Shield and Scarlet and Violet, you can have every Pokemon. I don't know what the fuck they're doing. Yeah, so... I guess... Yeah, no, let's mention the leaks. So, yes, it... Right, there had been all these predictions about when is Sword and Sheet... Or when is Scarlet and Violet gonna leak. And on... I wanna say either Sunday or Monday... The game did, right, a few people had copies, they started posting screenshots online, Nintendo came down with the ban hammer in a few places, and so then it was like, we, we knew like, eight new Pokemon, and then it was radio silence. Then about 24 hours later, we knew a few, right, another, a few more people got copies of the game, it started, more and more information started leaking, we knew more and more. And then it slowed down a little bit, and then on the last day, everything leaked. Right, the full, as far as I know, the game files are fully online now. I kind of, like that first day, I was like, okay, you know, whatever. But by the end of, this, by the end of that first day, I was like, you know what, I've seen all I want to see. Honestly, I kind of don't want to see any more of these leaks. So I started blocking people. So anyways, I started shooting. And next thing you know, I had blocked like 30 people. But I haven't seen a leak in days. Okay, that's actually a... You know, you know what got me a leak? Fucking TikTok. TikTok was where I saw the leak. <laughs> that hammer just ran off the ledge. Yeah, I saw a leak on TikTok. So yeah, that's it. But on Twitter, nope, I've been pretty safe for the past three days. Very little. But yeah, I had to block a bunch of people. <laughs> Again, I kind of knew it was going to start kicking off. Oh, I must have got bobblered. Now, I'm going to, I do want to talk about one thing from the leaks real quick. So we're not talking, I'm not going to be talking about any Pokemon or any, I'm trying to get the spoiler graphic up. trying to multitask and it's not working. I 
the heck is my mouse? There we go, spoilers. So I'm talking about one thing from the leaks. Um, this does this I'm not talking about a new Pokemon. I'm not talking about anything like that, any paradox form. Actually, I, I just realized I've seen two things from TikTok. But I'm not talking about any of that. Instead, there was a uh, Laura Kate Dale got an write an early copy, uh, just downloaded the files off the internet, you know, however it is. And if you don't know Laura Kate Dale, um, I don't know if she has a full shiny dex, but she's definitely been working towards a full shiny dex. So the one thing she posted from playing the new game, she might have even got a review copy for all I know, honestly. But the one thing she posted from the new game is um, about shiny hunting. So when she so she posted a thing talking about that you know how in Legends Arceus, when shiny spawn, you hear like a little shiny noise, and like the Pokemon gets like a little sparkle around them to you know tell you that they're a shiny Pokemon. It's honestly really nice because you can be wandering around in the overworld, and you'll just hear the shiny noise. And it'll, like, stop you in your tracks, and you'll be like, what, what, where, where was that, sh what, shiny, what? Right, it'll do that. It do it definitely does that for me. I it's happened several times, right, where I just, where I just hear the noise, and I freeze in my tracks. Well, she reported that in the new game, it doesn't work like that anymore. There is no indication that a Pokemon is shiny. Other than it's different, other than the fact that it has a different color, right? So, like, if what's a what's a very obvious shiny? I'm gonna use Ralts. I'm gonna use Ralts. Right, Ralts goes from a green to a blue, kind of an obvious shiny. But then you have someone like Gengar, who glitter or Garchomp's another one actually. Gengar or Garchomp, who don't change colors at all. Shiny Gengar, Shiny Garchomp look the exact same as normal Gengar and normal Garchomp. So yeah, the new game, if you come across like a Shiny Gengar or a Shiny Pikachu, Shiny Pikachu also doesn't really change much, there's no way to tell other than, right, noticing those slight color differences or um, battling it, right? You have to battle it. Because there's no sparkle, there's no noise, nothing. That fucking sucks. That's a, because that was great in Legend. I know, I know people have a lot of shinies in Legends Arceus. I know some people don't like that. Personally, I, as someone who's only gotten like, who only gets one shiny per generation, I know Legends Arceus spoils me, but I like that. I like being spoiled. Right, give me all those shinies, mate. But nope, the, they've completely removed that. The shinies still spawn, right? Shinies aren't any more or less common or rare. It's just that they, right? You know, you no longer basically get a notification. That fucking sucks. Bring back the note, right? That's a huge oversight. That they, <laughs> and the worst part is, they already thought of that in Legends Arceus. And they had already applied a fix. They had thought ahead. They knew that was going to be a problem. <coughs> and they did nothing. Now, the other part of that is that there's this new Let's Go feature. Where Pokemon, you can just send Pokemon to go out and battle random Pokemon. And now, right, and those Let's Go Pokemon will not distinguish from normal and shiny Pokemon. Right, Game Freak has set, said that at uh, preview events. That the Let's Go Pokemon are, do not, de right, they don't, de they don't know shiny or not. So, right, you could send out a Let's, Play po Let's Go Pokemon and it could accidentally kill some a shiny. And there's nothing you can do to stop that. And that also kind of sucks. Well, I guess they put, Pokemon put out the version 1.0 patch. And in the 1.0 patch, I guess someone someone who had a leaked copy of the game was testing out with it. Because the patch is already available, the launch day patch. And I guess people were messing around with it and found out that um, someone had their like Girafferig out. 
and all and it for some reason wouldn't battle this random Pokemon. Well, they ended up battling like doing it, putting in a normal battle. I think it was a Clefairy. And they realized, oh, it's shiny. So it looks like potentially in this newest update, the Let's Go Pokemon will no longer battle shinies. Which is a great right, that should have been there from the start. I really, I really do hope they fix this whole, right, give just, uh, like, I know, give the sound, give the sparkle, right, give us a little bit of both, make it visually distinct, make it clearly apparent that shinies are different. Right, other, because the, spar the sparkle, honestly, I know for accessibility reasons you want both, and that was part of why Laura K. Dale was bringing it up is for accessibility purposes. And you know what? Completely valid. Completely valid, totally. But it also, it's universal design. What helps players for accessibility can also help other players, right? Who don't need it, but still can take benefit from it, right? Like wheelchair ramps. They're designed for wheelchairs, but they help more than just people who use wheelchairs. Universal design, baby. It's actually, I, actually, I love universal design. It's, it's actually, it's really fascinating. It's like subtitles in video games, right? They're, right, people think subtitles are for, right, people with hearing disabilities. But I legitimately can't remember the last game I played without subtitles on. Because they're just super convenient and they're really nice. Also because nobody knows how to mix their fucking audio anymore. At least that's movies. So that's all I gotta say about Pokemon, you know... Just, I, I really hope they fix the shiny thing. But I'm, st Scarlet and Violet is a week away. I'm super excited. Honestly, <laughs> I just, I hope it's fun, man. I hope it's a lot of fun. So, our next story for the night is Indie World. So, Nintendo just suddenly announced that, hey, guess what, there's an Indie World. And so I was like, oh, cool, Indie World. Okay, let's see what you got, Nintendo. I went in it with no expectations, no thoughts of games or anything. So here's the here's the stuff I wrote down. This is not everything that was talked about, not even close. This is just what I wrote down. Wow, we've had more tricolors in this one game in, this, uh, in the past half hour than we did the entire, like, three hours of the last Splatfest. So the first game we got to talk about is uh, Venba. This was the game they opened the show with. And it's a cooking game about someone who's moved from India to Canada. And, right, they're trying to now cook traditional Indian dishes in, right, this new culture. And it's got a great art style. The food looks fantastic. I just, I think it's a really good looking game. I just, yeah, I was like, oh, that looks fun, right? I like the cooking mechanics. They all say, you know, it's Cookie Mama-esque, but that's not a bad thing. Cookie Mama is really fun. <laughs> I was hoping we could just sneak by. Um, so, yeah, I, 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 I like the art style. I like the cooking. It seems like a lot of fun. Yeah. It's one of those games that, you know, sadly, I'll probably forget about. Right, because for every indie game I always talk about that I do like, there's always stuff I forget about. <sighs> if I had gone for it sooner, we probably would have gotten it, because nobody was there. So yeah, I... Oh, we got one. Cool. So yeah, I, I thought that was cool. I have a nice death. So in my notes, I literally just have dead cells. So it seems to be just another dead cells, which is a great thing because dead cells is one of my favorite games of all time. So having another dead cells, because yeah, it seems to be another, it's a roguelite. It admit roguelike, roguelite. Those are different things, but for semantics, let's pretend they aren't. It seems to be another roguelite. But it has that, like, Metroidvania style, 
That's why it reminds me of Dead Cells. So overall, I think it looks very nice. Overall, I was kind of, I was impressed with Have a Nice Death. Uh, I I feel like I've heard of this game before, but it, like it looked familiar, but it looks good. So yeah, color me intrigued by that. Uh, next up, Pepper Grinder. This is something that was shown off at either a previous Indie World or a Devolver Digital Showcase or something. And it reminds me of one it reminds me of an old Flash game I used to play. I did not mean to jump into that. I was gonna kill the person with the hat behind them. But yeah, uh, Pepper Grinder, you're right, it's all about your di you've got like a drill and you're digging through the walls and you can like grab onto things and like slingshot back and forth. It looks, it's a very, it's a simple concept, but I, again, it reminds me of an indie, like a, one of those like Nitrum games I used to play, but I remember that game being very fun, so I, it also kind of, I mean, it's kind of like the drill power-up from Sonic Colors. But yeah, no, it looks pretty good. Uh, Coffee Talk Episode 2. Uh, was I don't know if it was announced, but they showed off some of that. I did not play the first Coffee Talk, but I had definitely heard of it. It was definitely a game on my radar. I had heard good things about it. So a sequel, you know, hopefully a sequel will be very good. I should, you know, if it goes on sale, right, with the second one coming out, I'm sure it'll go on sale at some, I mean, all indie games do at some point. Maybe I'll pick it up. Because, yeah, I think it's on my, like, Switch wish list or whatever. Uh, Rogue Legacy 2 got announced, and it was available today on Switch. So that's available right now. Um, Rogue Legacy is a rogue light, right? Like Dead Cells. And I've, I've been told I would like it, but I've never actually played it. Yeah, no, I have been told I would like Rogue Legacy. Uh, Wobble Dogs? It's like this... Wobble Dogs is this weird, like, pet breeding game. You know, those, like, Tamagotchi sort of things. <coughs> but you're making these weird, like, Wobble Dog abominations that, like... And, you know, you can end up, like, completely screwing them up by giving some of them, like, six legs or two legs, right? And you can just make monstrosities... Um, it's, it's one of those games that would be on, like, Monster Factory back in the day, even though, again, it's... I, I think RT Game did a video on it. I don't know, it was in the montage. I don't know, it seems, it seems okay, it seems fun. Um, Inscription is coming to Switch on December 1st. I swear to Glob, Inscription was already on Switch. The game, I because I swear I almost bought it on Switch. Because I heard everybody talking about it. And was like, oh, I should pick that up. I swear, I, I swear that game was already on Switch. I feel like, I feel like I'm taking crazy pills here. Because I swear, because I swear that game launched same day on Switch as it did on other platforms. But nope, I guess that's just me taking crazy pills. I don't know, I've heard, I know Inscription is like a horror card game. I've heard nothing but great things about it. Right? I saw several people calling it the Indie Game of the Year last year, which, yeah, I believe that. I don't know. It's... I've never played it, because, right, well, one, it was never on Switch, I guess. And two, it's a horror game. That's honestly the reason why I'd never played it. But no, I'd heard nothing but good things, and I swear to Glob it was already on Switch. I swear I almost picked it up at one point. But I guess... I guess I'm going crazy here. Um, uh, next up, a little to the left. This was... It looked... Because this was the game, like, after the montage. This is available now. But it's basically an organization puzzle game. I almost did pick this one up. I, I, w I went on the eShop yesterday, and I saw it on the eShop for, like, 14 bucks. And I was like, oh, maybe I will. You know? Hmm. Maybe I should. 
I ended up not doing that, but I definitely thought about it for a second, where I was like, ah, eh, maybe I should. But yeah, because earlier this year we had Unpacking, which I talked about on a previous stream at some point, that I really did enjoy, and that was on Game Pass. I played that on Game Pass. Do I recommend, I think it's still on Game Pass. If you have Game Pass, I totally recommend Unpacking. It's, it's a good bit of fun, good bit of organization game. You know, I liked it. But yeah, it remi right, it's 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 a lot sim like unpacking is right the store. It's all about moving places, and there's like a story to be told through unpacking. Right, this game, this seems a lot more puzzle based. Right, like your freshly frosteds and whatnot. I don't know why Freshly... F it's just because it's the puzzle game I played this year. That's why I keep using it as my example. But right, it seems to be more... Ba like, there's no, like, complicated backgrounds or anything. It seems a lot... It seems very simple. But, you know, again, Unpacking was a very fun game. So I see no reason why this wouldn't be fun either. But yeah, I almost did pick it up. Almost. I Well, we'll, we'll talk about that in Wibby. And then the final thing they ended on. So, okay, so to give some context. It, right, you know, I've been feeling under the weather. And so I, when this Indie Direct happened, I was laying in bed. Right, I was just, I was tired. And I was just like laying in bed. And I actually watched it twice. Because the first time I watched it, I was just like falling asleep for most of it i was just like oh god i'm so tired but then right you get that little unpacking game which i didn't even remember the first time i watched it i just remember like being there like nodding off watching the direct and then i hear sports story and boom i i like jerk up wide awake wait what yep the showcase ended on sports story and i was like oh oh i was so excited so if if you haven't heard Golf Story, which is the prequel to Sports Story, I consider to be one of the greatest games on Switch. And in my opinion, if you own a Switch, Golf Story is a must buy. Come on, give it to me. Yeah, Golf Story in my humblest of opinions is a must-buy on Switch. It's really good. Better than any Mario Golf game you could get. I, I highly, highly recommend it. And so Sports Story was originally supposed to come out, I want to say 2020, and it had been delayed a few times. But it was like, oh, it's finally coming out this year. But, you know, we're into... And honestly, I had completely forgotten about it. Because we're in... November now. I just figured, kind of kind of like something like Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. A game that kept getting... That got delayed, like, four times. Before finally coming out, I think, this year as well. Right, I just figured, ah, oh, they're gonna delay it until next year. Nope. It's coming out this year. I wish it was... I wish it was one of those available now things. The only thing that would have been better is if it was available now. But no, it's coming out December. We don't have a firm release date yet. We just have a December release date. But you know, December's better than nothing. It's better than nothing. I'll take it. I will. It will be a day one purchase for me, right? Even if it's competing against Inscription, <laughs> I guess. No, it's it look it's I'm so excited for it. Sports Story, Golf Story is one of the best games on Switch. I have no reason to doubt the developers. Noth yeah, nothing they have done gives me any reason to doubt them. So I'm super excited. You better believe we'll be there day one. Stream it? Probably not. But, 
yeah, no, playing it. Oh, I mean, that that's a last minute contender for my game of the year, man. Just with how these things work out. Yeah, that's last minute contender for game of the year. I have no idea. I, I, I was trying to avoid inking red territory. I was specifically trying to weaken blue. Which, yep, that worked out. So yeah, I'm so excited for Sports Story. It's right around the corner. Man, that's just... God, so many good... You know, this year was a very solid year for video games. Which, I guess, brings us into our next story. The Game Awards. So, the Game Award nominees for 2022 have not been announced yet. They are announced Monday. So we will talk about them next week. However, I'm going to bring it up anyways, just because, you know, it was a very good year for games. I mean, I've already, I saw a debate about whether or not Horizon Zero Dawn is going to be, le or Horizon Forbidden West, I mean, is going to be left out of the Game of the Year nominations. Just because that's how many good games there were. And, well, it came out in February, and... You know, recency bias. Which is totally a real thing. Because, right, I can already tell... Game of, the, Game of the Year nominees are going to be... I think sa the safe ones are God of War and um, Elden Ring. Right? Those are two guaranteed Game of the Year nominees. I'm going to say... I'm going to also say Horizon. Right? Like, I think they were taken a little bit, like, hy hyperbolic... I think Horizon's a pretty safe bet to be on Game of the Year. But then, other than that? I mean, I would love to see Kirby on Game of the Year. It would never win. Kirby, uh... Kir I almost called it Futures Deluxe. Kirby's... Whatever the Kirby game, I'm, I'm forgetting the title. Whatever the Kirby game was this year, I think it was a really good game. A lot of people liked it. It's reviewed very well. So I think it's, out of everything, it's got a chance. Uh, you know, kind of like Metroid Dread last year. Like, there was... N Metroid Dread was not going to win, but it's it deserved the nomination. Kirby's not going to win, but it deserves the nomination at least. Um, I think other another safe bet... Because usually the Game Awards only nominates six games. Some I know some years they've done five. It's usually six. I think they because the Oscars when it comes to Best Picture, they nominate nine, and I think that's the right way to take it. Give more right. I think it's better to have nine, nine for the Game of the Year, and you know usually five or six is good for everything else. But yeah. So I think Kirby's a good bet. There's, there, there should be some... Because usually what get right when you only have six, the first thing cut for most people is an indie game. And indie games deserve their spot on Game of the Year. And I can think of at least two indie games this year that deserve to be nominated. Cult of the Lamb. Cult of the Lamb, I think, is a very safe nomination. And if I had to bet money right now on which indie game would be nominated for Game of the Year, if one does get nominated... It's going to be Cult of the Lamb. But I think the other safe... The other pick is Vampire Survivors. Which I just don't know if it's getting talked about enough. Right? Vampire Survivor is this year's... What? Shawshank? Where, right? Like, it's not like... It's not... Like, Shawshank didn't do well at the box office. But, right, critically it won a bunch of Oscars... I kind of wonder, because Vampire Survivor, you're going to see on several people's Game of the Year list. And, yeah. and But that just got its console port. The console port was just came out on the 10th. And we'll talk about it a little later, because I have played it. Because guess what? I do have Game Pass. And it's on Game Pass. Well, like I said, we'll talk about that later. 
But yeah, um, Vam I think those are both good predictions for like what could be there. Um, what else? What else was this year specifically? Um, I don't think po Pokemon will definitely be indie game or not indie game. Um, RPG. Pokemon will definitely be nominated for best RPG. I don't think it will win. And Scarlet and Violet just won't be nominated. Right. Again, part of the problem with the Game Awards is they happen in December. And that practically cuts off a good month and a half of video games. That can never even get nominated because they come out in right late November, early December. And that's that fucking sucks, honestly. And it snubbed major games like Smash Bros. In the past. Right. Um, there was one other game that came out in November or December of last year. That probably will get snubbed this year. That horror game is pro uh, Callisto Protocol is probably is getting snubbed this year, assuming it's good. Again, assuming Callisto Protocol is good, then yeah, that's getting snubbed. Um, what else? But yeah, Pokemon's probably not going to be nominated Game of the Year, but it probably will take... It probably will be nominated for RPG. A game that should be nominated for Game of the Year, Xenoblade Chronicles 3. The fact that I know people who like... Z who consider Xenoblade Chronicles the original their favorite game of all time and they said three was better yeah no it should be nominated for game of the year it should be nominated for best indie game but knowing this industry it won't get either because infamously xenoblade chronicles 2 got snubbed at the game awards whenever i need an example of the game awards snubbing something xenoblade chronicles 2 is my go-to because, yeah, it infamously got snubbed. I want to say it was competing against fucking, um... Persona 5, maybe? No, I don't think it was. Maybe it was Persona 5R. I don't know. It was competing against something big. But I, I, I just don't remember what. But yeah, no, it, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, right, deserves a Game of the Year nomination. Honestly, I would, ra I would rather have Xenoblade Chronicles 3 nominated over Kirby. That would never happen. Again, there's a good chance not even Kirby gets nominated. Oh, God, we got two of them, but no. I got a four kill the other day. Just randomly saying that, I got a four kill the other day. It finally happened. Um, I do... Would Splatoon get nominated for anything? I think there is a best multiplayer category. But usually that goes to fucking Fortnite or fucking League of Legends or some shit. I would love to see Splatoon take it. Honestly, it deserves it. But I don't think they're gonna get it. Ah, there was, there was a third one there. Um, any other, I'm sure, there's tons of other stuff. I think Miles Morales got snubbed last year for nominee. Did it? No, maybe it scooted in at the very end. Because again, that was like a November game. Maybe, am I thinking Miles, no, not Miles Morales. Um, there was a PlayStation game that got snubbed. At the very, oh god, I don't remember what it was. Will Freshly Frosted get nominated? Probably not, even though it's like the third highest reviewed game of the year. <laughs> no, I'm not joking about that. Freshly, the whole reason I was even curious about Freshly Frosted is because it was the third highest reviewed game. 
and I had, like, never heard of anyone talk about it or anything. And I was like, oh, curious. Alright, oh, let's check out this Freshly Frosted, shall we? And it's, I, I don't know if I'd say third highest reviewed game of the year, but it was pretty good. But yeah, I definitely, I definitely want, alright, whether it's Cult of the Lamb or Vampire Survivors or anything else, I definitely want an indie game to get nominated for Game of the Year. I want an every, every year an indie game should be nominated because they're just as good, if not better, than most AAA games that come out. Yes, God of War is good. Yes, uh, Elden Ring is good. But something like... We haven't won a single game so far, right, for grass, but we're doing, we're keeping blue from winning. And it, and honestly, it comes down to the maps. That's something people have pointed out, that when it comes, when Tricolor, Hammerhead Bridge is a lot easier to defend on than Surgeon Shipyard. Oh, uh, Stray, I, I don't, do I, is Stray an indie game? I don't think of it as an indie game. I don't think of It Takes Two as an indie game either. Because there, I don't think there was an indie game nominated for Game of the Year last year. Unless you count It Takes Two, which I don't, personally. Because that, I think, has the backing of, what, EA? I don't know, it might, and I guess Stray might be, honestly, I could see Stray getting nominated. I've seen plenty of, like, memes that right pit stray, that pit stray in um, God of War against um, Elden Ring because you know Stray is more considered a PlayStation. It might be on other things, but most it, it might just be on PC. I honestly kind of can't remember. Ooh. So yeah, we'll see about that. But yeah, game. Will, you know, we'll talk about the nominees next week. I'll give my predict. I'll either give my predictions next week, or before the game awards happens. Right, like that week before. I don't know. I'll figure it out. I, I think I'll be watching the game. I don't know. Of the past four years of the game awards, I have missed at least two of them. Usually because, you know, I had other things to do that night, right? I had prior commitments. And I might have a prior commitment this year. I kind of don't remember. Because I know I missed, the, I missed the reveal of the Xbox Series X. And I didn't see last year's. But I don't remember if I'm seeing... I don't remember if I have a prior commitment this year. Because it's always the same thing, right? It's more, or it's, you know, it's more or less the same thing. I don't know why I'm painting that. So, I guess that leads us to our next thing. So, today was Extra Life. Rooster Teeth Extra Life for 20... for 2022. So, I... Rooster Teeth is embroiled in controversy, and I have very complicated feelings over all of it. Right. Because for every instance of the company saying they're going to change and do better... There's also all these instances of the company proving that, no, they aren't changing. Or at least, people change, but the company doesn't, right? So, like, the people, like, you know, the people on the ground, but working by their bootstraps, they're doing better. But it's the executives and the people in higher positions that aren't. That seems to be the feeling. That's the, right... And whether that be Warner Brothers, whether that be, you know, the heads of the company, it seems to be a little both, honestly. But it's just... But I said, when all the con... Right, when everything was going down, I said... At oh, my God. Fucking years. 
People really hate E-Leaders, as I learned. But right, as I said at the time when all the controversy was were going down. I was at least going to stick around for Extra Life. Because, you know, Extra Life still supports a good, right everything through and through. Extra Life still supports a good cause. That doesn't change. It still helps people. Right? There's... Right. So, this Extra Life... They, there was, like, no promotion for it this year. Like, I... Like, I knew it was going to happen sometime in early November. And I remember just looking on, like, Jack's Twitter one day and being like, oh, hey, here's the dates for, here's, like, a little promotional image for Extra Life and the dates. And I was like, oh, okay, that tells me when it is. So I knew it was today. Um, but, like, I haven't, I haven't watched Off Topic since February. I haven't watched the RT podcast since, I want to say January. I want to say the last episode I saw of the RT podcast was either the last one of 2021 or the New Year's podcast. I kind of don't remember. And I know, oh yeah, I haven't seen Off Topic in forever. The only Rooster Teeth podcast I was actually keeping up with was Fuckface. And even then, I was like two months behind. Or am two months behind. At least I think I'm... I'm, I'm going to guess two months. I'm going to guess it's two months. I don't know. It's it's something like that. But, right, so I just saw it on Twitter. So Extra Life happened. And, right, it was all today. It was only 12 hours, right? I they didn't Even though, you know, most COVID regulations are just completely gone. Even though people still can get COVID. Uh, yeah, no, it was just another 12 hours this year. And so I did sit down and watch it. And... Yeah, you know, I liked it. It was, you know, they did, um... Do I have a list of the segments here? I know they started off with Achievement Hunter, right? Mr. Pickles, Spicy Nuts, all that jazz Larry threw up. You know, the Achievement Hunter segment is always, you know, it's a good way to start things off, you know? Then from there, they did Werewolves, the earliest they have ever done Werewolves. I usually do really love the Werewolf segment... This year wasn't bad, you know. They'll never top the Xavier Woods one. Because that one's just so funny. But, you know, I, I didn't mind this year's. You know, having Blaine dress up as a werewolf and then be the werewolf was good. Um, They did, a, they did like a two-hour Mario Party. They did, like, not, like, playing the game Mario Party. They did IRL Mario Party. And that was... That was very funny. Right? You had Matt, you had Matt Alfredo. Uh, Armando was Bowser. Um, and it was two people from Hang Time, which were form formerly Game Attack? That sounds right. I don't know. I didn't watch Game Attack. I didn't watch Screw Attack either. But yeah, that you know the Mar the IRL Mario Party was fun, right? They did all a lot of the challenges, the balloon burstings. They did uh, the tug of tug of war from Mario Party Two. I think it's Mario. Party. It's one or two. But um, Armando was in a golf cart. That's how they uh, um, made it unfair. That was funny. That was funny. So yeah, I I didn't. Admittedly, I stepped away like once or twice, and one of the times I stepped away, I think to go get like lunch or something, was um during the um, Mario Party segment. But it was still, you know, mostly pretty solid. Right, they did a full 10 turns. They had, like, a they had a board set up in chalk. You know, things went chaotically. But yeah, so that was good. Uh, Stinky Time Dragon. Uh... <sighs> eh, whatever. I, I feel like it went a little crazy at the end... A lot of pummel horses, you know, you need to get those pummel horses in there. And this was where they got in a lot of them. There was some some weird stuff happened, but you know, overall, eh, could have been worse. 
Then they did Urine Jeopardy. So Rooster, so earlier this year, Rooster Teeth announced they were doing like a content creators program where it's like, hey, are you a content creator? Well, you can come like learn about content creation with us here at Rooster Teeth. Right, and they picked a bunch of applicants and everything. Honestly, I feel like we hadn't really heard much about it since then. But yeah, no, it's been going on in the background this whole time. And they brought out like the eight people they had chosen and had them compete in what was effectively like pain jeopardy. And yeah, honestly, that those those that was the second time I stepped away was near the end of the you're in jeopardy. I don't know, like the people they they're like like in a like in a much longer twenty four hours extra life as like a one hour show. I would be like, okay, you know, whatever. Right? Oh, it was another fun hour, right? But for, like, a two-hour thing... I think it was, like, an hour 45, honestly. Yeah, it was, like, an hour 45. I... Yeah. And, like, I, nothing against those... Con I, none of which, of course, I had heard of or anything. Like, you would have thought at least at some point the company would have promoted them, but as far as I know, they never did. So, yeah, that was whatever. Honestly, it was a lot more of, like, challenges... And like set up, like I remember them setting up challenges more than I remember them actually doing like Jeopardy or anything. Which I guess makes sense, but still. Then they did Who Spot is an um Who Spot Improv Hour, which was fun. It was Armando, Kayla, Chris, and Blaine. Right, they were doing who they were doing on the spot. They were doing whose line is it anyways. That was pretty good. I I really enjoyed that. God, Armando and Kayla are so fucking funny. Cause I, the, one of the early jokes ended up just evolving into a um. The, what what would Pokemon in the I what would um nine eleven in the Pokemon universe look like? That uh does jet fuel melt melt steel types. That was fucking hilarious. The hoedown at the end, just Armando ragging on Kayla's Twitter. Which, I, I follow Kayla on Twitter because she's fucking hilarious. Of, yeah, no, he's completely right. Her Twitter handles are crazy. So yeah, that that was great. The, the improv hour, you know, that, that I love. Uh, that stuff like that, stuff like that's always really fun. And then, of course, they ended it off with Achievement Hunter. This year, uh, Gavin wasn't there. Which, you know, no problem, right? I have no, you know, Gavin had prior commitments or whatever. No, no, I have no problem with that. You know, they got Joe to sub in, and Joe was, right, going from starry-eyed to like, oh, yeah, I'm super excited. Let's cheer every time the buzzer goes off. To, like, the the horror realization that, he, right, every one of those buzzers is a mood ball or a soccer ball to the face. Top-notch stuff there. You know... Because, yeah, they have Brad Stuber in again to do soccer balls. This time they put paint on the soccer balls, which is always how they escalate things. Because at first, right, they did moon balls, and then they put paint on the moon balls to escalate things. Yeah, that's just kind of how they do things. There we go. So yeah, I thought that was all f right. Um, the Achievement Hunter segment, like, Michael and Gavin used to actually try to do something. Now the segment, because they get so many elite donations, is just punishments. That's all they have time for. So it was just basically an hour and a half of Larry spinning the wheel, dishing out punishments. Um, who got it the worst? I don't know, Trevor... Yeah, let's go with Trevor because he got pummel horsed. He ate the he ate the pickles again. He ate the hot nut, the hot gummy bear. I mean, yeah. Well, outside outside of you know Michael and Joe, and then of course at the end ended with Michael and Joe. They got hit with sixty nine soccer balls, or at least they should have. You know they don't actually keep track of like those. It's just like a good guesstimate. But yeah, um, you know, it was, right, the moments, it started off kind of slow, right, when he had to, like, find the, the sweet spot. 
But once he did, it was fun. Right? It was funny to see Joe and Michael get hit. There was no big moment like in previous years where someone just goes down and gets absolutely destroyed. Nothing that big happened. But there were still good moments. Right? Joe got it really bad. And yeah, and then it ended off with Matt Holmes' song, and yeah. So, I do wonder, of course, if, right, how much... Because I remember when Extra Life first happened in, like, 2020. And there was like, well, are they gonna... How much less money are they gonna raise? Because, you know, we're in a pandemic. A lot of people have lost their jobs. It's gonna make sense that they're not gonna raise as much money. But I want to say they they still raised, oh god, like, I want to say they raised like a good, like, not a million, but I want to say they raised like just under that. And then in 2021, this, so I don't have the numbers for 2020. In 2021, however, so last year, I looked it up, at the start of Michaels and Gavin segment, they were, they were at like 48,000, or, yeah, not 48. 480,000, I mean. So, 480,000. By the end of Michael and Gavin's section, they were at 750,000. So, they effectively... I think it was like 760. But So, they effectively raised 250,000 during just Michael and Gavin's segment. Okay. Okay. This year, they raised... 250,000 total. I'm sure at the end of things with like merch donations and whatnot, it'll probably end up being around uh, 350,000. But you get what I'm talking, right? Like part of me wonders like, is, did all the, right? Is it just because we are in a recession right now? Did the recession affect things? Is that why the numbers are so low? Is it, uh, because they were raising, like, I swear, they were raising, like, um, they raised, like, a million, like, three years in a row. Or at least it felt like they did, anyways. So part of me was like, is the recession affecting things? Is that why the numbers feel lower? Is it, right, all the controversies? The controversies have to play some sort of a part. But, right, in one segment last year... They basically raised more than they did in the entirety, in the entire 12 hours today. Again, it's all, it all goes to charity, right? Like, I'm not, right? Like, I, it's, it's all money for charity, and I'm, right? And I support, I mean, I supported it, obviously. But it just, it does make me think, right? It's just one of those things that I was like, hmm... Oh my god. So yeah, it's just something I have I was thinking about. Um Uh merch wise, you know, I've for the past well, with the exception of I wanna say twenty twenty. No, with the exception of twenty nineteen, was it? I usually buy a poster for Extra Life, right? That's usually what I do, right? I have 29, I have 2018s. I did not buy one for 2019. The 2019 poster was like this heart. And like, they were th their whole thing was like, oh, we're going to get a professional poster done. And then it was just a heart. And it didn't, like, you could barely tell it was like Extra Life. When like previous years had been like a role, right? An amusement park, a hotel, like, I think they did the Avengers one year. And this was their 10th year anniversary, I should say. I didn't mention that earlier, but yeah. But yeah, 2019 was such a disappointment. So instead, I did, I just donated, you know. But then last year, they did the Moon... Or 2020, they did the Moonball one, which I thought looked fantastic. The Moonball is honestly my favorite poster. I'll take that. So yeah, the the Moonball one I liked, and then last year's um, Ice Spy book 
also very good. I liked last year's I Spy book. This year, they didn't even advertise the poster. I'm not even, I'm not joking there. I, like, they had, like, you know, every, between segments, they run a video. And at the end of the video, it's like, hey, this is the merch that's available this year. At no point in any of the merch did they ever show the poster. Right? This year, they had custom jerseys. They had uh, football, uh, soccer balls for Americans. Right? They had those. They had a throw blanket. But at no point did they sh show the poster. Like, the poster used to be, like, the big thing that everybody wanted. Definitely was for me, anyways. But yeah, th there was a poster. It was like a foosball table. To be fair, I, I don't think it was as good as, right, 2020 or 2021s. But it was still, I was like, okay. So I did, right, beside, on top of donating, I did pick up a poster as well. But yeah, it was just like, huh, that's weird, right? Like, they didn't even, like, have one on set or anything to show off. Like, I remember, I want to say it was 2020's poster reveal. It was, like, this big thing because, you know, there were, like, four variants of it. And there was, like, the Blacklight variant that there was only, like, a hundred of or something like that. Of which I do have one of those hundred, right? I, you know, it was for charity. I usually don't do special stuff like that. But it was for charity. It was for a good cause. So I was like, yeah, I'll get one of these Blacklight posters. Never actually seen it in Blacklight before. I just have it. Right? I, I think it looks very nice. It's literally behind my desk right now. But yeah, so it's just, you know... Is this the end of me and Rooster Teeth? <sighs> Probably. I don't know. I still... I'm still technically subscribed to first. Because I my renewal is on... My renewal happens in, like, the middle of the month. And, like, when the controversy... Like, my renewal happened in, like, the middle of all the controversies. So, like, I didn't, like, stop it before it renewed. Because, you know, everything was still coming out daily at that point. But yeah, this year, uh, this month, I prob this will probably be my last month of first. Prob uh, probably. Again, like, I feel like, I know they addressed it at, I know they addressed it at, like, they took a week off. And I'd have to hope they addressed it at some point. But legitimately, I have no, because I don't listen to any of the podcasts, I don't know. And it feels like in everything else, like on Twitter, they put out that one statement and then just kind of hand waved over the rest of it. So, yeah, I don't... I don't know what's going on. Again, the people are good. It's the executives. And the... The corporations that are bad. You know, shareholders. Stuff like that. That's how it works in most other businesses, anyways. I can This sniper... I need to go from the other side. I cannot fucking get past that sniper. <sighs> that sniper just has too much of a hold on us. <sighs> of course, they also suck. Yeah, I know. They, they've got it locked down. We can't even get close. I wish I could help out, like, red team somehow. But, like, you know, the same damage I do for blue, I do for red as well. Especially when they're right next to each other. That's not gonna happen. We're, we've lost. Even if, even if we were to take the ultra signal right there, there's literally nothing we could do. And yeah, we don't have... Like, we have a 52 gallon of Flingza. Like, honestly... 
At least red team could deal with that sniper with a bow. I think a bow could deal with a sniper. We had nothing we could do there. Yeah, that was just... Red team was getting equally as dominated as we were. Because I bet they pig off us too. And then they just switch over to red team. So I guess that takes us into Wibby tonight. So... If, so last week, I talked about how I was like, oh, you know, I saw that Bug Snacks was on sale on the eShop. Maybe I'll pick up Bug Snacks, right? Like, huh, oh, that sounds like it could be fun. Maybe I'll finally pick up that game, you know? And, well, that's exactly what I did. <laughs> I saw Bug Snacks was on sale and was like, you know what, I'd be willing to, I, like, I know I could just start another file on the PS5 version. But, you know, I have no problem giving young horses my money. They deserve it. Especially because I didn't pay for the Isle of... I didn't buy Bug Snacks originally, and I didn't buy the Isle of Big Snacks. They gave that away for free. Which I would have happily paid money for. I said that at the time. But I was like, yeah, I kind of want to play Bug Snacks again. So I bought, so I bought Bug Snacks on um, Switch, and it's still a really good game. I went through, and I 100%ed I it again. I even did I even did all the letters. I found the secret the not the Triskelion, the triplicate area. I even did the triplicate area, which we did not do on stream. There are a lot of letters. Like I know we did the letters on stream. We did some of them. There are so many more that I didn't even get to. D doing all the letters, like the, all the letter challenges to get new stuff for your house took four ever honestly i probably spent more time doing the le it honestly might double the game's length okay that's a little hyperbolic definitely feels like it though at some points especially on the switch version so right the game base the game plays really well i think it still looks good right not as good as the ps5 but it still looks good right it plays well right i didn't notice any slowdown or anything the one main difference between the PlayStation version, the PS5 version, and the Switch version, the loading times. The loading time between areas and between... Uh, the loading time between going to the different areas, right, going back to Snacksburg. I don't, I mean, I remember it taking some time, but I remember it not being that long. Because I, ne I ne if you watch my playthrough of Bug Snacks, I never fast traveled. If I needed to go to an, a different area, I just ran there. Because, you know, it was fast enough. On the Switch version, meanwhile, if I ever needed to go, to, if I ever needed to basically go to two loading screens, I would just fast travel. I used fast travel so much. Because the loading times take forever and it especially sucks when you're doing all these mail challenges and oh you complete this challenge to right collect six cheese bug snacks and then you have to return to town just to unlock the next quest ah what a hassle but yeah the loading times are definitely a lot longer on the switch version i use fast and i i try to take do as many things outside of town as I possibly could. So that way I only had to return to town when it was absolutely necessary. Because it just, because, right, right, the loading times between each zone were like, okay, this takes a good, like, I, I'm, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, let's say 20 seconds. It takes a good 20 seconds. And my, I didn't actually run any tests or anything. I, that's just my guess. The loading times going to the village might be double that it takes longer to get back to because you know there's more going on in snacksburg it takes longer to load up snacksburg as a result so that always you know that was always a right so i tried i avoided going to snacksburg right i was like okay is have i done everything else i could possibly do for needing to return back to Snacksburg, yes, yes, I did. But again, once the long, once you had finished with the long loading times, the game itself ran fine. 
I never actually had any problems. I don't think the game ever crashed or anything. It just, the game, it had long loading times, which is, you know, the Switch hardware. I then I do not like they might have been there on the PlayStation version, but I don't remember them, right? Like especially not as long as like that. Yeah, I they were decently long, so that. That's my one thing. Other than that, I think the game ran fine. It still bug snacks. It's still a great game. I did right. I did everything. I did the Isle of Big Snacks again. I did the the tri triplicate area, which is, you know, it's a neat little thing that like is building out the um, Grumpinati or the the snack lights as they actually call themselves. God, I'm so excited for Inside Job next week. That's next week. That's, I think, uh, Friday. Inside Job Season 2. Ah. Okay, I might have pushed a little too hard right there. But yeah, so I, I still love Bug Snacks. You know, it's still a really good game. I do still highly recommend it. It's very fun. Again, maybe... I, I don't know if it's on Game Pass. I know it's on Xbox. I do not know if it's on Game Pass. You know, maybe consider if you're if the long loading times really get to you. Maybe, you know, consider getting it there. We won a 10x battle. I'll take that. Um, I personally, I put on, uh, Jen, Jenny Nicholson made a video about Evermore Park, which is like a fantasy entertainment park. Let's go with that. It's not a theme. I mean, it's a theme park, but it's not like Disneyland or it's just like the character interaction. Go. It's a four hour long video. Oh, we got a festival show. Still have no idea what the fuck those do. At least if I do, I do not remember. But yeah, I put, I had that on in the background. So, right, like, it was, so I was playing through the games, doing all these letter challenges. And then anytime I had to go into a loading zone, it was just like, oh, well, I guess I'll watch the General Nicholson video for 20 seconds. And then, because other than that, I was listening to it. Um, with that. Um, and then you and you can luck with like the letter challenges, you can do almost all of them without going to the Isle of Big Snacks. I think there are only two that you need to go to, and they both involve covering a Grumpus. Like there's one that's like cover a Grumpus in like six chocolate bug snacks, and by default the game has five in them. And the sixth one you have to find on the Isle of Big Snacks. Uh, same thing with, um, there was one that's covered Grumpus and Cheese Snacks. And I want to say the, the it was like eight. And by default the game has, right, like six or seven. And you find the eighth one on, um... You actually, there's actually like four Cheese Snacks on the Isle of Big Snacks. But you only need to worry, but you only actually need to get two of them. Which I was super glad for. Because I, I did not want to refight the boss for, like, a third time. The boss of, um, the Isle of Big Snacks. It's not that it's hard, it just takes time. It just takes a while. There was, like, some of those bosses you can just zoom through. Not all of them. Definitely not all of them. <laughs> But yeah, so I I enjoy I still enjoy Bug Snacks. I still recommend it. Game of the year, no, but it's still really good. 
Game of the Year bug snacks. Um, so after that, so I've been talking about streaming Pikmin 3. Because I've been really wanting to replay the game. But I was like, yeah, we're gonna, I'll stream Pikmin 3 eventually. And then I just never got around to it. But, how'd you get a, how'd you get a shirt with Ninja Squid on it? Huh, interesting. I wonder how you, can, I wonder how you change, how did you get Ninja Squid on a Splatfest team? I, I think that's the first time I've seen that. Yeah, some, something's up there, because normally Splatfest tees have 2x. Huh. Curious and curiouser. So, right, I've been talking about wanting to play Pikmin. But I hadn't actually done it. And, but I've been like, want... So, the Pikmin stream was not going to be a normal playthrough of Pikmin 3. It was a challenge run. Right, like, like the kinds that you see those YouTubers do all the time. Because I'd had an idea for a challenge run. But I was like, you know what? If I'm going to do... Because I was considering doing it this week. I ended up not. And I'm not going to do it next week because Pokemon. Because we are... I am streaming Pokemon. But um, I was like, you know what? I want a refresher on Pikmin 3. I want to see, like, is this actually possible to do? Right? Just, like, not, like, doing it. But just playing through the game again. And, like, checking certain things right as we play through to basically know like is this actually something that's possible or am i just going right am i just like making this all up and we'd get stuck halfway through or whatever and from my testing yes it what i want to do is completely possible it's just not easy which i mean challenge run obviously and two my biggest fear was realized like there was one thing in the run where i'm like God, please don't let this be real. Please just let this be me misremembering things. Nope. Nope. That's going to be a fucking pain in the ass. But I found a loophole. But still. Still, it's... Oh my god. But other than that, I played through Pikmin 3 again. What's that? Is that a, sp is that a badge location? Is th That's the circular area in Salmon Run. Huh, I've never seen that one. There are so many badges I've never seen. I know badges are kind of like achievements in this game. There are so many I have not seen. But yeah, so I played through Pikmin 3 again. Still a really great game. God, am I excited for Pikmin 4 next year. Again, hoping it's next year. But Pikmin 3 is very good. Still a lot of fun. We will at some point... Because again, I now have my... Even though I didn't do it, I just did a normal... 100% playthrough, because it's not hard to do, right? I think my 100% playthrough took 17 in-game days. I also am going to do it on normal mode, because there are just too... Like, there's going to be so much time wasted doing stupid shit, kind of, that we kind of got to do it on normal mode, even though I can still zoom by some things. Like, I'm convinced I could beat the first boss on the first day. Or second day, I guess, depending on how you look at it. Yeah, depending on how you look at it. Right, I, st I still... I am not amazing at Pikmin 3, but I'm better than nothing, right? Like, I at least know my way around the game. I remembered... M the only things I didn't remember were uh, the upgrade locations. I remember three of them, but I didn't remember the fire upgrade, and I didn't remember the other one, which I'm forgetting right now. Other than that, yeah, I more or less remembered everything else. More or less. But Pikmin 3 is still very fun. I still do recommend it. But yeah, what I want to do is possible. It's not easy. It's not too... I mean, I don't think it's going to be the hardest thing in the world. Like, I've seen those challenges. Oh, beat the game without ever getting hit. Even though we are technically going to have to do that. Except for the final boss. Yo, yo, again, when we eventually do do it, because I do want to do it at some point, it'll make sense then. Right now, and I, it's one of those things where I've looked up on YouTube to see, like, has anyone else tried this? Technically, yes, but not in the way I want. Like, there was one person who did it, but not in the way I would have done it. 
And there's some stupid... Like, we gotta get... We gotta work around stupid Pikmin AI, because sometimes those Pikmins are stupid, and they make my life harder. But yeah, no, I, I basically did a proof of concept. And my proof of con... Or not, not even a proof of concept. I just did a normal run, and along the way I tested a few things. And my test came back successful, so... Yeah. It's gonna be it's gonna be fun whenever we get around to it. But Pokemon's next week. So the last game I played, it, it was it the last game I played. Yeah, the last game I played was Vampire Survivors. So I, the only podcast I still listen to, is Podquisition, and they've been talking up. Vampire Survivors, the entire right for months now. How it's one of the best games. It's game of the year. Uh, James Stephanie Sterling, it, they are a writer on Vampire Survivors. So right, I've been hearing nothing but it, and even without that, right? They even before becoming a writer on it, they and everybody else on the podcast was still recommending the game. So I would heard nothing but good things about Vampire Survivors. But it was PC exclusive. It's only like five bucks on PC. But it, it, or it was on PC Game Pass at some point. But it was only, right, like five bucks on PC. It's not an expensive game at all. But it came to Game Pass on Friday, on the 10th. Or maybe that was Thursday, I guess. It came to Game Pass. And I was like, oh, I'm going to have to try that, right? I'm going to have to try that out now that it's finally on Game Pass. So I booted up my Xbox for the first time in like four months. Got game, got another month of Game Pass, because, I mean, I'm sure I could have just bought the game for, what, five bucks, but I'll save that for the Switch port. Because it's, got, there's no way this doesn't come to Switch. After playing it for as much as I have, there's no way this doesn't come to Switch. God damn. But yeah, I play Vampire Survivors, and I like it. I, I definitely have, I definitely need to put more time into it. Because I definitely am not at the point where I'm going to call this my game of the year. Right? I'm definitely not that far. But yeah. Literally, I say it's a, it's a pixel art game. It's very simple. Like, legitimately, when this, when this game comes to Switch, you're going to be able to play it with a single Joy-Con. Right? It literally does not... The only button you ever use is maybe a and i'm sure you could remap that to like a trigger or something the developers would be very smart to have a mo like a one-handed mode for this game that remaps it to a trigger because legitimately all you do is move all the attacks are completely automated and you know you're just walking around this world killing enemies collecting experience picking up item like treasures and upgrades and whatnot as you play through. Right, and uh, you unlock treasures and you unlock upgrades, like they give you new weapons and stuff. It's super simple. It's a super simple game, but it's just fun. You know, it's just fun. Like, it's, it's such a popular game that it's already, like, there are already Vampire Survivor clones out there. Right, people who are just like making their own variants of it, just not as good. Again, I've heard several people say that this should be game of the year. Will the, I mean for those personal people it will be? Will it be at the game? Will it be nominated at the game awards? Probably not. It should be though. At least that's what they're saying. Again, I want an indie. Again, that's why I say Cult of the Lamb is probably getting nominated because that's a safe pick. But yeah, I've I've enjoyed it. I definitely need to play more of it. I definitely need to play more of it. But I will. I will in due time play more of it. Because, you know, it just came out. It just came out. So I haven't put that much time into it. It's going to be a great podcast game. You know, kind of like what I've been using Splatoon for. Or what I've been using... Um... Oh shit, that was my fault, wasn't it? Okay, I'll take it. Oh, I accidentally pressed it on the trigger. Oops. Whatever. Whatever. So yeah, Vampire Survivor, I need to play more of it. I 
My, you know, so there's like, the, so your starting character has a whip. And at first I was like, huh, this is weird. But then the more I used it, the more I was like, okay, I get why people like this. Right? I get, I get why this works. Right? And as you unlock new weapons, then your second character is like the spellcaster. And I was like, I thought I would like them more, but I kind of didn't. And then this third, the third character, I was like, ugh, they, they fire like this projectile that like shoots through enemies. And I just did not like it. And then I unlocked Garlic, which allows you to have like a little circle around you that damages enemies. And all of a sudden that character, became, the third character became OP. And it was just like, oh wow, all of a sudden they're really strong because nothing can get close to them. Holy crap. Okay, that's cool. And yeah, that was kind of all I, and right, so that, my best run came out of them. And then, you know, I had a few more unsuccessful runs and whatnot. But you know, I'm just slowly working my way up, unlocking new characters. There's a few other things, but I'm just going to leave it there. It's it's a really interesting game. It's a fun, it, I, it's fun, but it's definitely one of those things where it's like, yeah, I got to put way more time into this. I don't like this. Fuck, and that's on my end. Fuck, that's on my end. Shit. I get nothing for that. Ah, God. So, yeah. Vampire Survivors is really good. I'm gonna actually cancel that. Um... Because we've got some other things to do. That's that's. But yeah, I'll talk. I'll definitely talk more about Vampire Survivors next week. Right. I don't. I haven't played too much of it, so I don't have too much to say. But next week, I'll hopefully have a lot more. Because hopefully, we'll have played more. Or you know, hopefully, I will have played more. Oh yeah. I always kind of forget. Still need to find the pink. And I know you get the locker upgrade at level 30. That just makes sense, right? So we need to get to level 30 at some point. <laughs> that was pretty good. There are some fun lockers. Alright, so we do have, before we continue on, uh, we do have, before we get to uh, Black Panther actually, there is something else I want to do, but before we do that, well, before we get to Black Panther, we're going to Amiibo. So I gonna get, let me go get those real quick. I'll be right back. Okay, I tested this earlier and it was working. Oh, it's working still. Get some light. Get some light on the situation, shall I? So yeah, here we are, back again. It's amiibo time. So right there had and previously we unboxed the Splatoon 2 amiibos. Which I did not buy at launch, but they were on. They kind of restocked recently, and I was like, "Yeah, sure, I'll pick them up." Because they were there. Because I had all the other Splatoon amiibo, and I was like, you know, because I was gonna buy the three ones anyway. So I was like, "Yeah, I'll pick up the two ones, and then we'll have them all effectively." So I've got the three ones here. So we've got girl, 
inkling girl who, you know, is like the protagonist that you see at like when you start up the game for the first time. Right? That's exactly what they're replicating. So you've got that one. You've got Octoling Blue? I, I think it's the haircut is uh I wanna say in the second in Splatoon 2, I wanna say the haircut was female. Maybe maybe not. Maybe this wasn't even in two. But I think if this is a girl, I'm gonna guess this is a boy. Just because usually it's a girl and a boy, Splatoon Amiibo. Girl boy. The Octolings, girl boy. The Inklings from Splatoon 1, girl boy. So I'm gonna get and this is this is clearly girl. Even though it just says yellow. So I'm gonna guess this is boy. I see I don't know where they got the outfit for this one or Oh god, does this one have the ugly shoes that I hate? It might. I see. I don't know. Like where, like the other amiibos, I at least see like a reference to game. My one disappointment with the Octoling Boy or the Octoling Blue is that it doesn't have a Splatana. Right. Like my disappointment with this green guy was that he doesn't have a Brella. Cause right, like Duelies were the big new weapon of Splatoon Two. Right, Duelies. So you see Duelies in the amiibo. And. Right, but the other one just has a normal gun, right? A normal splatter shot. Kind of disappointing. I mean, to be fair, the Amiibos on the original game kind of worked like that, right? Um, the Inkling Boy has a... The Inkling Boy and Girl both have splatter shots. The, what Octolings, meanwhile, one has a sniper and one has a brush. That's more interesting. But yeah, having the new weapon, the bow... Okay, makes sense. But instead of giving this one the Splatana... No, it gets the 96 gal. And you can tell it's the 96 guy by the longer snout on the weapon. I mean, I'm sure there's other things, but... What is that longer snout? It's got like a... It reminds me of like a coffee filter. Is that what it's supposed to be on the 96 gal? I know you're not getting the best look at that, but... If it'll focus... This is why autofocus kind of sucks. Man, yeah, I, I don't know. That's just kind of weird. And then instead of giving us an Inkling or an Octoling, they instead gave us little Bub. It's a little Bub amiibo. He's got two little salmon eggs. You know, that's the one. I think this one's cute. I think this one is cute. I like, you know, I like, I like little Bub. I like the two salmon eggs. I think that's a neat detail. Instead of, you know, just giving us more ink octoling things they're instead using the ink in a creative way to give us little bub i like that i do not i <laughs> the only reason i have the splatoon 2 amiibos and these out is from the last time we used them i literally just never put them up after the last stream same thing with these guys i just never put them up i just never put them on my shelf up there that's the only reason why i still have them right here they just sit under my tv <laughs> So each one gives you different outfits. This one gives you like a Mad Max uh, Junker, right? Post-apocalypse outfit. This one is a uh, Sushi Chef. Yeah, su uh, I say it's like Sushi Chef sort of thing. And then this final one is a uh, Japanese delinquent, I guess. Yeah. Interesting, they still have 3DS on there, but yeah. So yeah, those are the three gears for the three Amiibos. They are in the... I know they were added in the 1.2 update, so... Yeah, I can get them all now. Honestly, I don't think... Like, the best ones were the Octolings. The best... If you can get any of the Splatoon Amiibo for the gear, the best ones were the Octolings. The uh, Mickey Mouse out... It's not Mickey Mouse. The Wahoo World outfit... The knight outfit and the witch's outfit are all really cool. These ones are okay. You know, honestly, they could be worse. They could be better. They could be worse. So, yeah, that's our amiibos. Um, God, do I, have, uh, do I have room to put these boxes anywhere? No, I don't. No, I don't. So, all right, let's get this open. that
Yeah, I have all the Splatoon. With these three, I mean, I'm sure they will do Fry, Big Man, and Shiver at some point. But it took, like, Pearl and Marina, it took a long, it took over a year for them to do Pearl and Marina. So I'm sure it's going to take a long time. Ah, new Amiibo smell. Honestly, they're really high. Again, Amiibos got more expensive. But they, when they did, the, co the quality went up. It's not like they got let more expensive for no reason, you know? Again, I can never focus on this camera. That's the girl with the Splatana. It's honestly, it's it, it, it is high quality. Like, even just comparing these two. You can see just an increase in quality. They're also bigger. Like, they, I know they made the their Inklings bigger in the new game. But you can kind of see that with these guys. Right? Like, I know they look the same size, but this one feels bigger. I don't know. I don't. I, it's weird to explain, but holding it, it makes sense. Yeah, even though they look about the same size. In fact, this one might look bigger because of the hair. No, this one feels bigger. Taller, anyways. Even though, again, it's technically not. So yeah, that's the girl. Uh, next up, let's do the Octoling. Who again may or may not be a boy. I'm not sure. Again, I would assume so, but, eh. They can be whatever they want. Okay, that one's a little better. God, I think I'm almost done with these things. Like, honestly, because after Smash Bros., it's like, what else is there to collect, you know? So yeah, there's a blurry Octoling, Octoling, which again, it only wants to highlight. I know there's a way I can auto, like I can turn off autofocus, but it's such a pain in the ass that I've never done it. That used to be how you do it, if you just moved in and out. That's why I always do that, if you've never known, is usually you can trick the autofocus by doing that. But no, whatever. It's, again, I have no idea where they get the outfit font from. And it definitely does have the ugly, those shoes that I hate in-game. With the weird laces and whatnot. Yeah. It's not... It's okay. It's very smooth. It's very, they're very, yeah, smooth and silky. Whereas, like, the, the, one, these ones feel, like, it's still smooth, but it feels all, like, you can tell. To be fair, I think I said the same thing about the Octolings, that the Octolings felt smooth. I Man, once they're done with the Smash Bros, I'm out. Assuming we get Sora, which, again, I felt like Banjo-Kazooie was a flip of a coin. I feel like Sora is kind of the same way. I don't know, we got Mike, my, <laughs> Steve and Alex. But yeah, we've got Sephiroth, Kazuya, and Mithra, and Pyra. Which, I know we've seen the Sephiroth one before. It, and it's also, it is weird that these launched now, instead of with the game. But these two launched at the same time as the game? Like, that's really weird, but it's also kind of something... Like, clear... We, we've we've seen Amiibos get delayed in the past, right? Like, that's nothing... That's nothing new for Nintendo. Right? Amiibos get delayed. God, they took, what, like a year on Bayonetta? Ah, that fresh Amiibo smell. God, 
those very they're so curiously placed. So you see like the egg, how it's like a right, it's like an orange with a dot. I kind of wish it had like the I see and I don't remember if in the game it's an orange with a dot or if it has like an actual you know design in it. I kind of don't remember. Cuz I know there are the golden salmon eggs have like little like fishes inside them like the little bone structure and all that with like a little eye but i don't remember if the orange eggs do or if the orange eggs are you know just a dot but i kind of wish they had like the little fish bone structure in them but you know they are i know you can't really tell but they are slightly transparent like i can kind of see through them that's a terrible angle yeah you can't really tell but they're they're just slightly transparent Definitely feels, it's definitely weighted this way. But, you know, you have those two support structures on little bub, so he st it stands up. I Again, I think this was a good idea, because we had Inklings. We, we've we had Octolings. Giving us something, a Salmonette, I think was a good idea. I think this is barely tall. This one's barely taller than this one. It's kind of hard to tell... But this it feels just a little taller. Which this is already like kind of one of the taller ones. But yeah. But yeah, I feel like doing doing Little Bub as the third was a good idea for an amiibo. And right, putting the eggs in there also really helps out. It makes it look better than just having it like being floating in the ink. Yeah, I like this one. I, I do. So yeah, that's our th that's our three Splatoon amiibos. You know, it was it was kind of inevitable. Um, will they be doing Big Man Frey and Shiver? I'd assume so. They did Pearl and Marina again, even though it took like an extra year. They did uh, Callie and Marie. I'd see no reason they wouldn't do Frey Shiver and Big Man. I see. I see. Literally, I, I hope they work. Wor they work like Callie and Marie though, because so in Splatoon two, there were Splatfest tournaments, right? And you would get like the whole idol production thing, and that was really cool. But once Splatfest ended, there was no way to do those again. Whereas in Splatoon one. If you have the Callie and Marie amiibo, you can do a spot, right? You can go back to the Splatfest stage and everything. Not not the stages, but like the whole like outside layout, right? And it was like there was like a special music thing, and it was like, oh yeah, that's cool. I have no idea why they didn't do that with Splatoon Two with Pearl and Marina. Like that should have been a thing, but no, all those things. And I know there were some like Splatoween, Christmas, the other one that I'm forgetting. Oh, Chaos and Order. I don't know why they didn't do that for Spl uh, for Splatoon. Or for Splatoon, right? Like, we should have been able to revisit those. But nope, didn't happen. So those are all just lost to uh, time, more or less. But yeah, so may hopefully they'll fix that with Shiver Frey and Big Man. I don't know, we'll see. And see, that's... Like, I talk about, like, oh, why doesn't this one have a Splatana. But the one thing I do that Splatoon does at least realize is that, right, the idols use those weapons. Um, M M um, Marie is a brush, is a a roller user. Uh, Callie is a sniper, right? Whereas Agent, Th Agent 3 is just a normal shooter. Then Pearl and Marina. Marina is a Brella user, and Pearl is a Dooley's user. And Shiver, Freya, and Big Man, right? It's, it's. I don't think it's been confirmed yet. It, it will be eventually, right? That Shiver is a, uh, sn a sniper, a bow, and Frey is a Splatana. That'll, it, it, and that's all confirmed through like the dialogue, right? The stage dialogue and the Splatfest dialogue. But mark my words, that will happen at some point, because they least think on that front. Yeah, 
So yeah, that's just something, you know, wanted to point out. Yeah, so we now got three new amiibos, three new sets of clothes. Will I actually put these on my... Up on my freaking shelf? My shelf is so fucking full. It's, it's not even a big shelf to begin with. And I just completely filled it. So, yes, but God, I, I just don't want to redust the entire thing. Yeah, that's Amiibos. You know, I'll put them in eventually. I'm not in any rush to do that. So that takes us to our last story of the night. Uh, Black Panther 2. So, I, right, I saw it opening night. And I liked it. I didn't... So, for the first Black Panther, I, I saw it. I liked it. I was not as blown away as ever, as some other people were. And you know what? That's fair. I am a cis-Hispanic male. Right? This movie wasn't in... Right? That, that movie will not affect me the way it will other people. Right? And I totally acknowledge... Right? And that's perfectly fine to acknowledge. Right? The second one, meanwhile... Well, one, it was... Right? We, they've redone Namor... So that he's Mayan now. So that, and like, on one hand, I'm like, wait, is this actually represent... Wait, is this movie representing me? <gasps> oh, wait, I'm Hispanic. Never mind. Because <laughs> that's different than Mexican. Kind of. I mean, if you if you asked my grandfather, it definitely... No, great grandfather. It definitely would be. Oh, 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 oh boy. You did not want to call him Mexican. That's all. That, again, I'm... That's a whole other story for another day. But yeah, I... With the... With... With with Black Panther, right? You, ha, you have Namor, who's that representation. And you know, it's cool. I do think... Right? Because Namor's just another Greek guy, right? No different. I mean, yes, per character-wise, he's completely different than, like, a Hercules or whatever. But there's literally nothing that can that stops him from, oh, we're gonna rework this entire character to be right Native American, and they do some really clever things with it. Again, without getting it, I'm not I'm not gonna say anything because that's spoilers. But just know, I thought it was very clever what they do with uh, Namor and um, his name. That was very clever. Oh, look at that Sprigatito! Oh my gosh. That's adorable. Oh wow. Double kill. Cool. So yeah, I I I like the movie. I do. I do think my problem with it is that it's kind of the first movie again. Again, without going into any specifics. There are things where I'm like, wait, isn't this just what happened in the first movie again? Like like At one po basically what I'm saying is, at, without actually saying anything specific, at one point I wanted, um, oh, f Sh is it Shuri? It's her, right, Shuri, right? I, I think it's Shuri. Right? The, the younger sister, who is, you know, the main character in this. Right? I wanted her, at one point, to tell Namor that, like, we've dealt with Killmongers before. You're no different. But that never actually happens in the movie. But I wanted that. Because, again, in a lot of ways, this is just the first movie again. But it's also a movie about, you know loss and grief and moving on and tradition because you know she's all about science right she's one of the top scientists in wakanda and part of it is that she doesn't write a lot of these traditions that her people have she doesn't entirely believe which yeah you know totally that's totally a modern thing that people think about all the time so right and like Right, because a lot, because there's like these elements of like tradition, 
where it's like, how do we mourn the dead? Well, this is how our tradition says we should do it. But is this actually what you need? Because one one of the things that people, I, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna give this spoiler. I'm 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 going to give this one. Something that people were worried about was, oh, is Chadwick Boseman gonna be killed by Namor? Right? Is that how they're gonna do it in this movie? And you know what? That was a real concern. You know, fair enough. Because again, if you're bringing, because right, Namor, or because right, T'Challa is representative for right a whole group of people and now you have namor who's representative of a whole different group of people and having that one group kill a different group that that could cause problems and you know no they don't do that instead he just right it's sudden and he just dies right like shuri's trying to save him and she can't right like i think they say they don't use cancer i think they say it's a heart disease but, right, it's still, it's given all the weight and all the tension that it rightfully deserves. Right, they, they don't, they don't half-ass anything in this movie. I'll say that. Right, they take it seriously. Because this is a, tri right, it, this is a tribute to Chadwick Boseman. And did it make me cry? Yeah, of course it did. Right, that, th those opening bit, the, the opening of this movie is, right, there's no music, there's little talking. There's little talking, and then eventually there's no talking, and it's just silence. And the entire theater was matched that silence perfectly. Right? It was just right. Like you know, right? There's always those people who are like, oh, people, white people crap, clap at the movie theaters, right? Right? That's just like a white people thing. And yeah, yeah, you're right. But no. When it when this needed to be silent, it was silent. Cause I will with this move right, we saw with Thor: Love and Thunder earlier this year, right? Marvel they made right. It was a very comedy focused movie, right? There were serious moments, but it was for the most part a very right. It was trying to be a funny movie. Doesn't mean it was always funny, but it was trying to be anyways. Right? The jokes didn't land for everyone, but. It was trying to be funny. Get the... That's part of the thing. This movie, on the other hand, is serious, right? It's a very serious movie It where it bears very heavy weight. It takes its subject matter very seriously. It has jokes, I guess, but honestly, I couldn't... Re if you asked me to tell you what jokes were in this movie, I couldn't name a single one. Like, I can tell you what happened in Thor Love and Thunder, right, the jokes that happened even if they failed. Nope, I got nothing for this movie. But, yeah, I would say this is a serious movie. This is one, right, the MCU does take itself seriously here. They, they don't, like, make light of anything. Which I know is something, right, the MCU gets criticized for a lot is taking a serious moment and undercutting it with a joke. They don't do that here. At least, again, if or if they do, I can't remember them doing it. I did not... Ugh, God, I did not want to do that. But, I liked it. I did not love it. Because, yeah, it's kind of one of those damned if you do, damned if you don't. You make a serious movie... People, right, take it too seriously. Right? People don't like it because it's too serious. You make a jokey movie, and people don't like it because it's not serious enough. Or, right? Because it's not serious enough. It's... You just can't win. Right? You make a too serious movie, people don't like it. You don't make a serious movie, people don't like it. Yeah, you just can't win. Because the group I went with, I was, I think, the only one who actually liked it. They, they did not like how right serious it is how because it's about two and a half hours and it it is it you do feel those two and a half hours right kind of like eternals eternals was what three hours and you felt those three hours i felt the two and a half hours of this that's not always a bad thing but uh definitely the other people i went with did not like that i will probably see it again though
You take it. I got you. Again. <laughs> it's not about us winning. It's about them losing. And if we can just get them to lose... Then we win. Yeah, no, I was fine with the red person. The red person probably would have killed me, but I was fine getting rid of them. Oh, we actually won that one. Oh, cool. Oh, that's our first actual win-win. We need to at some point get both of them. At some point, we do need to do that. Honestly, if I had taken out the red instead of gone up there with them, I probably could have gotten both of them, but nah. Yeah, so I li I like Black Panther too. It's got right. It is kind of slow. I will say I thought it, it looked a lot better than the first one. I mean, yes, there are some underwater shots, and it's it's you know I've realized it's really hard to do underwater in movies, in live action movies. And I'm I'm thinking of the little that new Little Mermaid, right? Because the live because the animated Little Mermaid is it makes underwater so colorful. But in the real world, underwater is very fucking dark. And the new Little Mermaid's taking that into account. But as a result, the movie looks very bland. And like underwater here, you know, they try to right, make it look colorful and whatnot. But they're also keeping in mind real world lighting. So it does kind of look just fucking dark sometimes. But I do definitely, like, when you actually see, it's in the trailers, but when you see the Black Panther suit, it looks better than the Black Panther suit did in the first movie. But yeah, um, what else? I, 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 don't, I don't think we're going to go into spoilers, you know. I, I Usually I do, I don't think I will tonight. Um, I liked Riri Williams, you know, for a character who I don't, who I have very complicated feelings on in the comics. I don't hate her. There are some people who really fucking hate Riri Williams. I personally don't mind her at all. She's got, she's definitely not been perfect on every front, but I don't hate her either. I, I, I did read her initial debut. Um, I remember when that happened post-Civil War II, because again, I did read Civil War II. <laughs> we, I've told that story before. Um, did I ever talk? I talked about Outlawed, right? God, I must have talked about Outlawed at some point. Yeah, I'm just going to pretend I did. I don't know if I actually did, but I must have. But yeah, I read Riri Williams, at least some of her initial run. Not all of it, definitely. But I read some of it. And, I uh, Again, it was, it was okay. It was... But I, I liked her, admittedly, I did like her better in the Champions, uh, sp specifically in Outlawed. She took a very interesting position, being right both on their side and against them. Because, you know, her girlfriend, question mark, died? I use a question mark because I don't remember if they were actually dating or not during that time. <laughs> yeah. That's gonna, that's gonna be soon. They're gonna, cause yeah, that's gonna be soon. Cause they did confirm we're getting a Vision TV show, and if they're good, they're gonna do Tom. I know WandaVision took elements from Tom King's Vision, but I do think we should go straight horror Tom King's Vision. That would be, oh god, that would be super interesting. Get a. But yeah, I I liked it. I, I know I just keep saying that because. Uh, Again, part there are parts of this movie that I, it's really hard for me to judge because it wasn't all made for me. And, you know, that's fine to acknowledge. Go listen to those creators who have their own thoughts, right? Don't, don't listen to soups. Listen to Straw Hat Goofy. <laughs> that's, that's, that's been the drama on my Twitter these past, like, since the movie's come out. No, before, what am I fucking saying? Before the movie even came out. When Soups gave his initial review.
Again, I'm not. I'm. I'm not getting into. I don't even know if Straw Hat Goofy actually ever called out soups on that. I know other people definitely have. <sighs> yeah. No. I do. I recommend it. Yeah. Of course. I mean, I still, as an, because as an end to phase without again without being any specific. I know people didn't like Phase 4. Phase 4 had an, a lot of up and downs. Honestly, I... I Well, there are some things. Like, when I saw Eternals, I did not like Eternals. But upon re-watching it a few months... Like, when it came to Disney+, Plus, like, a few months later... I actually liked it a lot more. And, meanwhile, I have not rewatched Thor Love and Thunder. So I could not tell you if that got better or worse. But... Yeah, I, I did not rewatch that movie. I rewatched. I don't know. But yeah, overall, I know Phase 4 has been very missed for a lot of people. And yeah, because Phase 4 is all about passing on the mantle, right? Whether that be right, Wanda's kids and right, Billy and Tommy in WandaVision and Multiverse of Madness. Whether that be... Um, or I guess also uh, love in uh, Thor Love and Thunder but also right Falcon becoming the new Captain America um, Miss Mar right uh, Kamala Khan becoming Miss Marvel from Miss Marvel or from Captain Marvel right it's all about stuff like that it's all about passing on the title right new titles new characters new legacies that's what Phase 4 is about. And I some people just don't like that, right? Like, that's a lot. Right? There's no... I mean, yes, there's an end goal, King. But we'll see about that. We'll see how that goes. Because, yeah. And, well, te and I mean, technically, I think Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special is technically part of Phase 4, if I'm correct. I don't know. I could be totally wrong about that. That might be the first thing of Phase 5. I'm not entirely sure. I, they didn't actually address that. But either way, I... I have... Right, Phase 4 is very mixed for a lot of people. And I think it was always going to be mixed. Because, you know, we just got off the big threat. And now we have to introduce the next big threat. And it's just... Right, it's less climactic. But also, the MCU didn't start as the biggest thing in the world either. It took time to build up, and Phase 2 was, was its growing pains. And, yeah, people... there And Phase 2 had problems, even though, again, I think... I, I liked Age of Ultron. I liked Iron Man 3. Thor of the Dark World is bad, though. Very bad. <laughs> Even though a lot now since Love and Thunder, all of a sudden people act like Thor the Dark World's good. It's fucking not. Neither is the first one. First one's okay, honestly. At least Kenneth Branagh knows how to direct a movie, right? Like he knows what he's doing. Didn't entirely work, but at least he knows what he's doing, I guess. <laughs> But yeah, is is phase four right? Our growing pains, yes. But will things be different in the next part in phase five? I don't know. We'll see. I mean, they're starting off with K right with Ant Man and Kang, and we know the new movies, or we know Kang Dynasty is one of the movies. So yeah, but then they also have to set up Doctor Doom, which is like a whole other thing. But hey, we're getting Thunderbolts, and I'm excited for that. I think I, w I was one of the people who wanted Thunderbolts or Dark Avengers or whatever. I thought that was a good idea. Still think we're going to have to get a Young Avenger. Honestly, I would rather have a Young Avengers than a um, Doctor Doom Secret Wars. First. I know that sounds weird, but I th everything they're doing in these movies is setting up a Young Avengers. And yet, there's nothing to do with the Young Avengers anywhere on the horizon. Unless it, you know, turns out to be like a TV show or something. Which, honestly, now that I say that, that actually makes a lot of sense for something they're doing. 
I don't know. It's just going to be really weird to go from Kang, the Kang Dynasty to a new Avengers to write them fighting Doctor Doom in Secret Wars a year later. It's going to be kind of weird. And I, I have no problem with... Like, I was thinking about that with, like, the CGI and, like, how, like, rushed CGI artists are. I, I have no problem with Marvel slowing down. If they want to slow the fuck down to give their CGI artists more time to do better jobs... Give your CGI artists more time to do better jobs. Right. Okay, now we're gonna we're gonna end off. We're gonna do one more game, and then we're gonna end off. Cause that's that's all I gotta say about that. Yeah, let's hope we get it one more tricolor. Um, so yeah, I, th I still think this was a great idea for a Splatfest. You know, it's going to end up with Spugatito went right, because, because, you know, they were ahead, Shiva was ahead, Grass was ahead at the halfway point. You know it's going to end with Grass winning. That's how the last two played out. I don't know, honestly, maybe Fire, may because of how close things were at the midpoint, it could end with Fire winning. Honestly, I'm not throwing that off the table, but I still think Shiva's kind of got it. I hope they break that streak of... I want it to end on the tricolor. Yeah. I hope they break that streak eventually, but we'll see. And then, you know, we'll check out the art. Yeah, I do hope they break that streak eventually, right? Because, you know, I mean, to be fair, that happened with Pearl and Marina. Marina won, like, four Splatfests in a... Four or five Splatfests in a row. And it wasn't in... And then eventually Pearl got, like... It was, like... It was very, like, one-sided on the choices. And then, boom. And then, I feel like once Pearl won once, that broke the streak. Which, again, it shouldn't really matter which idol is which, but it kind of does. I don't know, at least that's how it is in my memory. So yeah, uh, I don't know. but I still think this was a great idea for a splat, right? I'm happy to here be here supporting Spurgatito. I know it's supporting grass types as a whole, but as I said last week, I am literally perfectly balanced when it comes to my starter choices. I literally have, I'm literally th nine generations, three of each starter, w counting Spurgatito, which is the one I'm going to choose, because I've... I've seen the leaks. I've seen the starter leaks. And, yeah, you know, I'm still... I'm, like, that... They didn't, like, sway my opinions any. My... That should have given it to us. I was a quarter of a second off. They should... That should have given it to us. That's bullshit. Oh my god, they were all there. I got two of them. God, they're all right there. Okay, whatever. If, they, if Red takes it, I have no complaints. Disappointing. I mean, I'll probably try again tomorrow. But disappointing we didn't get that badge. I wanted that badge. They're protecting it hard. Oh! I'll take the Super Ultra Mega Signal. Even though I don't think it's enough to win us the match. We got it too late. That was a good jump, because they, they practically eliminated each other. Oh, we barely got... Okay, I'll end off on a win. Yeah. 
I wish it would give us that. You see that's I mean, there's a golden one as well. But I want that normal one. I don't. I don't remember how. I saw how to get it once. I do not remember. We've gained some clouds. We're in triple digits. Come on, give it to me. Nope. Because, yeah. Oh, I did get it. Tricolor attacker. Ooh. Does it? I swear you said... Oh, I guess it's just you win as an attack. Did I? Oh, well, I only got two tricolors last time, so I guess that's why. I wonder how you get the golden. Is it for winning ten, or is it for whatever? I don't know. Some of these, some some of these are weird. That one surprised me. Blows me away. That's been ten k in hot Atlantis. I don't know. I'm, I've been working towards them. Let's see. Who did my friend? Ooh. Who did my friends list choose? Oh, I swear it would tell me who they chose. Well, I see one water and one grass. Okay. Alright, so let's go take a look at the art. Yeah, we'll end off on a win. And you know I might play a little more. Didn't we play against Jelly? Or didn't we play with Jelly? I feel like that happened. Maybe it was a different Jelly, but I feel like that happened at some point. Oh, that's cute. We failed you, big. See, because you gotta throw early on. So then you can win in the second half. I think this looks great. That's pretty When we saw that in one of the matches... That looked fantastic. Ooh, look at that. I, li I like Superior. I mean, I, it's one of those Pokemon that, like, originally I was like, ah, whatever, Snivy, whatever, who cares. But no, I actually really do like Superior. Team Fire. <laughs> it's like that South Park episode. There's there's always... God, I wish I could draw, man. <sighs> that one's also great. <laughs> Bamboozler. God, I wish I could draw. There's always so much good art. I think that's a spoiler? Just a guess, but I think that's a spoiler? Also pretty good. Oh, it's Marnie. Fire, fire. That's cute. God, there's some good art. So, stream schedule for next week. Uh, Pokemon. Yep, 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 Pokemon. Pokemon, Pokemon. Um, because, yeah, I don't think I had a capture card with the original when, um, Sword and Shield came out. Maybe I did, maybe I just didn't do it. I, I kind of don't remember. To be fair, this, I mean, this used to be a monthly show for a reason, right? Because I was very limited in how, how much and how often I could stream. But things have changed now. So, yeah. So I still don't do it all that often, sadly, because, you know, work. God, work. But I will have some time next week. So, yeah, my goal is Friday, you know, we'll be in here, we'll sit down, and we'll Pokemon.
let's see. Bub? It would be Little Bub, wouldn't it? Little Bub. Little Bub. Oh, look at my... It's, it's interesting that it doesn't have all the stuff around him. Surrounded by the slats of Blattsville, little or small fry must not know where to look first. Seems to have noticed you. Now it's staring intently. Don't be alarmed. It's marked you as a uniquely fresh individual whose freshness will grow even stronger over time. Admiration, the small fry hopes to watch over you and progress and officially become your friend. Hope you change your gear and equip. I think this just writes my current outfit to the amiibo. And we get the first part of the Chaos Kit outfit. Yep, that's it. Yeah, it's interesting that all the ink isn't there. I mean, I guess that's how the other octopuses work as well. I gotta play more table turf. I guess there's like a bunch of stuff you get at the end of that, but whatever. But yeah, so we will be we'll be out with Pokemon, you know. I'll be doing a I don't like I'm not gonna do like a twenty hour stream or anything like that. You know, it'll probably be my standard what, four hours. We'll probably do in chat and Pokemon next week. Either that or Vampire Survivors, that'd be I honestly think Vampire Survivors would be a good in chat game. Probably. Maybe. Potentially. I don't know. I'm, I definitely thought about it while playing it. And, you know, I love to support games like that. Even though, again, I don't know how much it needs my support, but... Yeah, what a great idea for a Splatfest, man. I mean, I know they did a Pokemon 1 in, I want to say, Splatoon 1. Still a great idea. And that might have been a Japan exclusive thing. I kind of don't remember. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll be back with Pokemon on Friday. And, you know, we'll be doing Pokemon. I don't know if it'll be every day, but we'll definitely do a lot of it. Because I'm excited. I, I... I honestly don't know the last time I was this excited for a Pokemon game. Because Legends Arceus just... Or Legends Arceus, I mean, like, I was excited, but... I don't remember being, like, blown away by it. Definitely wasn't for Diamond and Pearl. And then for Gen 8, just had so... Even though I thought a lot of the controversy was kind of stupid. I It just... It killed all my excitement for the game. But this, I'm like, oh shit. Even if it's not perfect, which, again, it doesn't... It doesn't appear to be. It still looks good, right? It still looks like it's going to be fun. So I'm excited. It's going to be snubbed at the Game Awards. <laughs> uh, again, if, if Xenoblade Chronicles 3 doesn't win, then you know the entire system's fucked. Because it should easily be nominated for Game of the Year and win RPG by default, but it's not going to... It might, probably won't do either. <laughs> what a shame. But yeah, we'll be back next week with Pokemon. Um, and, you know, we'll do Pikmin 3 eventually. I wanted to do it before Pokemon and... We might have been able to, but I'm not worrying about it right now. We'll do that Christmas time. <laughs> it's not a very Christmassy game. Second one kind of is. Second one's got an entire Christmas dungeon. Yeah. Eh. Whatever. With that, I hope you all enjoyed. Stay tuned for more. Till next time, peace.